Hiya, hope you're good. So I've had baby empty. <laughs> um, yeah, it was amazing. So I just wanted to run through my birth story. Um, I've got it written down on my phone so I don't forget anything, hopefully. Um, yeah, so she came at 40 plus three, according to the hospital, and 39 plus five, according to my prediction. <laughs> so a little bit early, a couple of days early compared to what I thought she would come. Yeah, so in the maybe three, four, five days leading up to going into labour, um, I was overwhelmingly tired. Um, I had got tired throughout the pregnancy, but this was <clears throat> like really strong urge. I had to sleep no matter what. Um, it would happen during the day or in the evening, going to bed or whatever, but it's such a strong urge to fall asleep. Like usually I think afternoon it was. Um, so that was quite new because I'd had, you know, bits and bats, but this was really strong. So I remember that. Two days before I went into labour, I had um, really crampy pain um, down in my back and in my pubic bone. Um, and I had a big clear out of number two. <laughs> um, so that was two days before. Had lots of pressure down below as well. And then strong Braxton Hicks. But I could feel this time that they were slightly affecting my cervix, just very slightly. Um, I had been having Braxton Hicks for weeks and weeks before that, but they'd been getting progressively, progressively, sorry, slightly stronger. And they'd started sort of um, over the last week as well, um, when I'd had one, it would kind of go up my spine into my neck. It was really weird. I've never had Braxton Hicks like that before. And also a couple of days before, she was like ridiculously active. And I remember with Finn, I'm not sure about Felix, my first, but the day before I went into labor with him, he was like so active as well, like just out of character active. And then the day before I went into labor, so that was at 40 plus two, um, from the hospital's due date, or 39 plus four for mine. <laughs> I woke in the night about three or 4 a.m. with really, really strong period pains in my lower belly, and I couldn't sleep. I thought, this might be it. And they were, I think they were kind of, I don't think they were coming in waves, actually. I think it was more consistent than that, so I wasn't quite sure. I was nearly gonna wake my husband up, but I decided not to. And then they eased off. I fell asleep at like six or seven o'clock, something like that. And then I had another clear out, number two, <laughs> in the morning. And then that day, um, from the moment I got up and started walking around, I had constant tail tailbone ache. Um, it was actually really hard to get around because it was so um, painful. So I remember this with Felix, my second, um, the day before, or a couple of days before I went into labor, I had the same thing, like really big tailbone ache um, and I couldn't really move around for the couple of days before he came as well so I knew it was imminent so I was texting everyone saying oh in the next day or two <laughs> so then we get around to the actual day that it happened so I woke up loads of energy I wanted to go to take the boys um because it was half term to um like this farm which was 40 minutes away <laughs> and I was um tidying round and I had a bath and I had a shower and did my hair and my makeup and I just felt like I had loads of energy and almost forgot about the tailbone ache. It was there but it wasn't, I don't know, I just I just felt really happy as well. Anyway, we were I wasn't sure about going out because obviously I could I sensed that something might might happen soon. And it got to eleven o'clock and we were just about to go out and um, I started getting some light contractions, but I wasn't sure if they were Braxton Hicks, but they were different. So I thought maybe really, 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 really early labor. Um, so that was at 11 o'clock. They were every four to five minutes and lasting um, 30 to 40 seconds. And it was like half 11, 12. And I called through to Jamie and said, like, can you start timing these? So that's how we knew what they were. They never changed, <laughs> um, but we obviously decided not to go too far away from home, so we didn't do the original trip that we planned for the boys, and we just went for a walk to our local village, and they were still coming every four to five minutes. Went and had some lovely lunch with the boys, which was nice. 
still coming every four to five minutes, lasting 30 to 40 seconds. Pain was non-existent, like there was no pain to them, but they were consistent. So I thought something's happening, but I was thinking, oh, maybe it's like pre-labor and this can happen for days or I wasn't sure. I was texting people that I know and saying, you know, this is happening, but it doesn't feel like it's um, like it's labor, especially because the last two times that I've gone into labor, um, the first I've known about it, bar little twingy things, was my bloody show and my um, waters breaking, my front waters. Um, I think the waters went first and the bloody show with both of them. So <coughs> sounds like I'm losing my voice. Um, so that's what I was expecting to happen. So I was thinking, nah, this isn't real. But looking back, they're probably similar to the contractions I had after my waters had broken, my show had came. But I didn't <laughs> at the time. I was just like, these are nothing, really. Nothing's changing. So we had some lunch and then we took a walk to um, Jamie's. Oh, I also had a clear out that morning as well. So another number two, um, nice and tidy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so after the lunch, we took a walk um, about a mile or so to Jamie's mum's. Just because, again, I had so much energy, which was different from previous because I hadn't been able to hardly walk anywhere and I was like no we are walking and Jamie was like we'll get in the car I was like no I want to walk I want to walk so yeah we walked down there uh, got there stayed with her for an hour or two I think we left hers at about half four something like that and again they carried on really consistent every four to five minutes not strong at all absolutely fine talk through them no problem and I sort of said to everyone like I'd Think this is gonna be a long labor <laughs> like it's gonna go on for ages so yeah we got home maybe half or five I can't remember the exact time and they carried on like that <laughs> so I did a bit of bouncing on my ball I had a bit of a lie down um, and just kind of waited and I, then I went upstairs um, to this room that we're in now and over the chair which is in the background there just behind the um, the cot thing and then um, I just started leaning over that and reading my notes. I think, oh, that was it. I took my notes upstairs and I was gonna ring the midwife and just say, because it's a home birth, they liked you to tell them early, even if no one comes out until later. So I thought, I said to Jamie, God, I've been contract, well, I've been having these really, really mild contractions for such a long time now. Maybe I should just ring the midwife and let her know. So that's what I did. I went upstairs, rang the midwife and I spoke to her and said, I've been having them for X amount of hours. It was a long time by that point, like six hours or something, five hours. <laughs> um, but they're not going anywhere. I think it, I'm not sure it's gonna happen today, but I just thought I'd let you know just in case. Um, so she was like, yeah, just let us know if anything changes and I'll let the midwife on call for the home birth um, know that you're potential. So yeah, I just leant over there for a couple of contractions after I'd called and all of a sudden I had a massive contraction and then I had another one really close and then another one and then another one and I was like yeah I think something's changed here so um Jamie happened to just be coming upstairs for some reason after seeing to Felix downstairs we'd left Finn at his mum's and um I just walked out to him and I said this is real. <laughs> I was like, this, they're coming, they're really strong all of a sudden, and I think they're coming quite close together. I hadn't actually looked at how close they were coming, but I could just tell. Um, and I was like, no, this is this is happening. I was like, you've got to get Felix um, somewhere, <laughs> you've got to get Felix somewhere else. So um, I think by that time, I've written down that it was just after 6 p.m. They'd started to come every two to three minutes, but I hadn't timed them at that point, but I timed them just after 6. 6.30 or something. So Jamie took the kids, uh, Jamie took uh, Felix to his mum's, so both kids were at his mum's at about 6.30. Um, I had some work to do <laughs> to finish off for work, so I got out my laptop and tried to, like, I only spent like, I don't know, 20 minutes doing some work, but I was, <laughs> it was really difficult because the contractions were coming quite strong, and I wish I'd have done it earlier because like I had, I'd had all day, but I didn't think it was like Labor Day that it was going to happen quickly. Um, so yeah, I did that, and then Jamie came back. I called the midwife just before seven o'clock, seven p.m. that night, and um, she arrived just before seven thirty, and she could see straight away that it was full blown 
um, that I was like, you know, um, active labour, I guess, is what it is. Because Jamie, <laughs> Jamie had come back and he was having to rush around. So my contractions were lasting nearly a minute. So he was having to rub my back. I was sort of leant forward, kneeled forward, and I needed him to rub my back because it was so painful. So he was like wiggling my back and rubbing my back and wiggling my back, wiggling my hips and rubbing my back for like a minute while it was happening because it did take the edge off it just slightly. And in between so for the minute that he wasn't doing that he was getting the birth pool set up and we were both running around in that minute of space that I had without a contraction getting things set up because we it had just come all of a sudden so it was quite hectic and I was quite stressed which was not what I wanted to be so in hindsight I should have taken the early contractions a little bit more seriously I think we both could have. I'd also done with the Positive Birth Company I'd bought their pack for hypnobirthing so I kind of knew what was happening to my body a little bit better than the other two uh, times that I'd given birth and I tried to breathe through it and I did quite well um, on the early contractions however that went slightly out the window <laughs> when it got a bit later on um, but I tried my best um, to, to stick with the breathing which helped um, and I was spraying like lavender and stuff like that so managed to set the mood as well as I could within the time that we had <laughs> so yeah then the midwife had arrived at 7 30 ish and she checked me and did my blood pressure and that and she said and I honestly I said to her I reckon I'm only like one to two um because earlier they didn't feel like anything and I don't know I just I've only just in my head I'd only just started contracting when it started getting painful so I just didn't think I would be very far along but yeah she checked me and I was a seven um she said that she could easily stretch me to an eight so um she was like you're you're just nearly there and I was like oh my goodness so straight away after that um again they carried on coming every two to three minutes or every two minutes probably at that point uh, they were getting more and more and more intense as well and I was <laughs> shouting at Jamie like harder press harder <laughs> um, because yeah they were I'd forgotten how intense um, contractions are when you get later on in labour but especially I think because it was they were coming on it was a quicker labour than my other two my other two were um, 12 and 14 hours so this seemed a lot quicker because in my head, I, I wasn't really counting the earlier ones. They just didn't feel like anything, but they obviously were doing something. So yeah, she called for another midwife <laughs> straight away because there needs to be at least two midwives at home birth. And then she called again because no one came quick enough. Um, and then the second midwife arrived just in time. So I carried on with that. I leant forward and Jamie was helping me and then I was leaning back onto him and he was doing it that way as well. So I just kept slightly changing positions, um, but not too much. They were frantically filling up the pool as well, trying to get it warm enough. And I kept saying, can I go in? Because just after she checked me, um, and this was the first time the normal stuff for me happened, just after she checked me, I had a couple more contractions and then my water started to pop, to burst. I never saw any bloody show. It was probably in there or came out with a baby or whatever. But yeah, it was like totally different labour from the other two. And with every contraction after that, they just a little bit more gushed out until they obviously probably all the water pretty much had gone. Um, and I was just on the floor, but we'd, we'd in our living room, but and I was sort of leaning over the couch, leaning over the sofa, had the birth pool behind me. And then on the floor, we had the shower curtain. So, um, and towels and sheets and stuff like that. So I didn't care that I was, my water was coming out everywhere because we had like loads of absorbent mats and things like that, like whatever <laughs> was underneath me. So I didn't really care. So yeah, and I just kept saying, can I get in the water yet? Can I get in the pool? And they were like, no, not yet. Cause it hadn't got to the right temperature. So the midwife, she was on her own cause the other one still hadn't turned out was frantically like boiling our kettle, getting some more hot water in cause our hot water had run out from the pipe. Um, and then finally, <laughs> I think probably about 20 minutes before I actually gave birth, uh, maybe 15, um, I managed to get into the pool. She was like, yes, you can get in. So I got in and then the second midwife arrived um, and then a third midwife arrived because it was handover time as well. <laughs> so I actually ended up having three there when I gave birth. They didn't check me again. Um, I just felt the urge to push. As soon as I was in the water, it was 
amazing. Um, I said to Jamie, don't, don't touch me. Like I didn't need him to put pressure on my back or do anything. Um, I just held both his hands like that at the side of the pool, um, facing sort of that way at first and then facing forward. And it was just so much better. It was still really painful, don't get me wrong, really intense. Oh, but just the, the feeling of going into the water was amazing. So that was nice. Um, had some really strong uh, contractions in there or surges for hypnobirthing. And then I kept saying to her, like, I don't know if, um, is my cervix still in the way? Like, what if I'm pushing cervix? And Because um, with my second um, Felix, I pushed for a long, long time, like hours, and we didn't find, and it wasn't progressing anywhere, and it wasn't till we, I got out of the birth pool, and they checked me, and there was cervix still in the way, and still my uh, waters like the top waters just the bottom ones had gone or something so yeah it was I was just panicking that the same thing was happening that I was pushing but it would be wasteful pushing because the cervix was in the way and she was like oh, I'm sure I'm sure it sounds like really effective what you're doing you're making the right noises and stuff um, but I'll just get a mirror just to see what's going on because I kept um, checking myself internally and saying, like, nothing's low enough. <laughs> and I was just getting really worried. So anyway, the next contraction, so she got the mirror and the light, and the next contraction was so super intense. And she had the mirror down there. <laughs> and literally, with that contraction, like, the head bobbed out, and even I could feel that. And she was like, yeah, you're definitely, you're definitely pushing effectively. You've got nothing there. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> okay, fair enough. So yeah, and then the one after that, the head actually came out and I put my hand down and I felt um, her <laughs> hair and a, her head. I was like, oh my God, it was amazing. It was amazing. And the pain was still there, but I, it was like a background pain at that point because I could feel my baby. And she was like, so you want to, you want to deliver yourself? Um, I was like, yeah. I was like saying to her, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen next? So she was telling me that she'll spin round and then on the next contraction, the body will come out. So, and I could feel her, her head spin while it, it was in my hand. I wasn't holding tight, but I could feel her head spin and I could feel her body spin inside. Oh my God. And then the next contraction came and I think I like, ah, <laughs> had a little bit of pain with it, but, uh, and then out she came and I, like, I caught her. I just caught her looked at her for like a split second in the water and then pulled her out of the water and against my chest. Oh, baby through to you, that's it. Oh, nice and slowly, bring that baby up to the surface of the water. Oh my god, it's <laughs> the baby! Oh, it's the baby! Oh my god, that's Jesus. Oh, 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 you! just yeah it was just everything that I wanted from a birth apart from the pain which I hope would magically go away because I was hypnobirthing or trying to hypnobirth but it didn't um but yeah it was it was just amazing and then so that was uh, so yeah so born at 8 22 p.m that evening so my active labor from when I started to get actual when I started to realize I was in labor which was about six o'clock just after six o'clock so it's only two two and a half hours long <laughs> that I actually realized I was in labor so yeah really quick but kind of slow if you add in the hours of contracting without me realizing it was being effective before that I stayed in the pool for maybe five ten minutes um just cuddling her and talking with Jamie and the midwives and they were like asking about where the cord was and things and then I got out of the pool I led on the sofa again we had the shower curtain and all the bedding and towels and absorbent pads and things on that as well led on the sofa still I was the only person still to hold her at that point cons consistently which is again what I wanted led on the sofa and just waited really for my I didn't even try and breastfeed her um 
I don't know, we were both quite tired. <laughs> she was just led on my chest and I was just like, ah, talking to Jamie and going, wow. And just waited for the placenta. And that took about 20 minutes. And sort of towards the end of that 20 minutes, I think I did try and latch her. And she was doing the bobby thing, head bobbing thing. And she did sort of latch a little bit, but nothing major. Midwives checked down there to see what had happened. And I'd had a... a just a first degree tear, which is a surface tear. Um, she said that they could put like one stitch in it or um, they could just leave it and it should heal itself. Um, so I said, what do you advise? And she said, probably just leave it and um, it should heal for itself. So I didn't have any stitches, which is the first time, because with the boys I had, both times I had second degree tears, which is inside and outside. So yeah, recovery, so different so different with both boys i was incontinent at the at very first um with yuri which is not very nice um so i just wear myself um with my second i was incontinent both with yuri and with and my back passage as well which is hideous i wouldn't want anyone to have to go through that and this time fine <laughs> absolutely fine and I honestly think that the exercise that I was doing consistently, nearly every day, I did 10 minutes of squats and different exercises, really strengthened everything. Um, so yeah, just amazing. Yeah, that's about it really. So annoyingly it just cut out. Um, I think it only records for a certain amount of minutes and just switched off automatically. So I thought I would go and get little Jessie. So here she is, just starting to wake up slowly very slowly um but yeah she's gorgeous aren't you <laughs> you are gorgeous mm. so i'm not sure where i got up to but i think uh, delivered the placenta stayed on the couch for a while um normally the midwives want to see that you've gone upstairs well not upstairs but done a wee or had a shower or something like that um but she could see that we were really settled and really happy and so she just left me on the couch me and jamie stayed on there for a while and then made our way upstairs for our first night together um and the boys stayed over with jamie's mum for that night and then met her the next morning um so yeah Really happy with how everything went. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much got everything on my birth plan, which is amazing, apart from the fairy lights, <laughs> which I can let go. Um, so yeah, really pleased. Okay, <laughs> cheers, thanks, bye.